My name is Dr. Rachel Kubas Wilkinson, and I'm the principal organizational development consultant for the Myers Briggs Company. Our vision is to help folks live more enriching and successful lives with self awareness and better connecting with others, relationally or in the world of work. Diversity and inclusion is very important for all types of companies and organizations, but in my work specifically with startups, I like to lean into the work of inclusion because I say startups have to do so much, oftentimes with so many resource constraints, but inclusion is the type of area where if you lean into it, it can have some pretty big impacts. So for example, companies that um, from the point of creating their startup, begin to create inclusive cultures and focus specifically not just on diversity alone, but also in realizing the benefits of diversity. Well, they see things like greater decision making, enhanced um, innovation. They also see better ideas to bring in that diversity of thought and even grow into new markets. Absolutely, founders can misjudge that. Um, in fact, research shows that organizations can often think that they're doing better on diversity and inclusion than they really are. In fact, even with all the growth and investments there's been in creation of new jobs focused on DEI, representation of those jobs at the C suite, like head of diversity growing by over 100%, all of these fiscal investments have not yet moved the needle the way we'd like to see for many organizations. And in fact, when you zoom in to ask different stakeholder groups, be it leaders, HR professionals or employees, they all agree on one thing, and that's the fact that their organization is not yet leveraging DEI, working into DEI to the degree that it would be a strength. The leaders, especially higher level leaders and founders that would say that they are personal, strong advocates for DEI, they can make the mistake sometimes of assuming that all the other leaders and people managers in their organization would be equally committed to inclusion and to creating inclusive environments. In fact, the research shows us that the higher levels you go in leadership, the less you actually seek out and receive constructive feedback. So I, what I tend to find is oftentimes there can be some level of disagreement, um, maybe even folks not feeling completely vested, and it's hard for them to disagree publicly with a founder or with one of the higher level leaders about the criticality of DEI to the business, to the bottom line. But if that disagreement does exist, it can be very costly and it can mean the difference between an inclusive workplace and inclusive culture and not having one because it is in fact that people manager, that direct leader that creates the day-to-day -day employee experience at your startup. This is a heavy task to create inclusive leadership capability at your organization. It's a, it's a really specific strategic objective and you want to start it from the beginning. You want to carve out that partnership, either an internal resource or an external resource. You want to carve out those training dollars from the onset and not wait until the culture is already created or until um, you do think that you've matured enough or grown enough that you need training. If the training dollars are limited, then you're probably going to have to do some of the heavy lifting yourself. And what I would encourage would be some very practical recommendations. For first, I would say begin with talking about inclusion and inclusive leadership. Talk about what it is, what it isn't. Bring it into town hall meetings. Bring it into your earnings calls, your board meetings. Invite your leaders to do a virtual book club where you maybe grab a book that's just a few dollars for each leader and they do round table discussion and inputs. Bring about employee-based volunteer groups where your employees can generate ideas on how to advance the principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion, even if it is on a budget for your organization. So make each sort of stakeholder of the business, leaders, employees, be a part of those conversations. The second thing that I would recommend is create a culture of practice and improvement. We have to treat inclusive leadership with growth mindset. We don't all already have it. We're not all already there, but we need to create a safe space so that your leaders can be able to practice what, the, what it is to be an inclusive leader, get feedback, and continue to improve. Third, 
create a culture that rewards that, just like you would reward any other major contribution that somebody would make to the company, a new idea, a new product line, solving a big problem, reward inclusive behaviors, reward sharing unique contributions, divergent thoughts, the challenging of status quo, holding others accountable to an environment of diversity and inclusion. And then last recommendation is whatever you do, don't do it episodically, right? Don't do it as a nod to DE&I, do it systemically and do it authentically so that it comes across that way.